Hey y'all, let's talk about it. Brandy's best albums, Full Moon and Aphrodisiac. Yup, you heard me correctly. Brandy's best albums are Full Moon and Aphrodisiac. Her top two, but not two, is Full Moon, but we've been new. Anyways, these two albums are my absolute favorite from her discography. Both albums represent two interesting points in her career and arguably have Brandy's best music. Brandy's best song overall, the best song on this album, is When You Touch Me, Hands Down. I love this song. It's so beautiful. It's a standout song on the album. I'm, I'm shocked that it's not even a single. It, it, it screams being a single. I don't know why it wasn't. But if you want to know why they call her the vocal bible, listen to When You Touch Me. Amazing. Next, the title track. Happy that I'm Full Moon, oh my gosh. It is one of those songs, literally every time you hear it, it just sounds so new. Like, it just doesn't get old. I love how light and dreamy this song is. That's why I like to listen to this song at night. Because I low-key think Army be hitting better at night. Let me know if you think the same. And the production on this song steals the show. Shout out to Mike City who produced this song. It complimented Brandy's voice very well. Then there's I Thought. This is another song. I'm shocked this wasn't a single. This song is so catchy. I love how Brandy just powers through that song. My favorite part of the song is kind of towards the end because like as the song progresses, it the chorus just builds and builds. And then at the end where she's just like, she's just like, um, how do I describe it? Like, she's just like screaming out them notes and shit. Like, uh, I love that part of the song. Like, it's the best. Another song on here that's really great and that I love is All In Me. Yo, that song sounds like it could have been released today. Like, when I hear that song, I hear who Brandy influenced. Like, I could hear how she influenced, like, Kalani and SZA on this song. Because it just sounds like... Like, that song really aged very well. Like, that song could have been dropped today and it would fit in perfectly. And, yo, I love how the beat switches up in that song. Like, I, like when I first heard it, I did not catch that. I'm like, oh, shoot. We got a little beat switch going on. I'm like, oh, shit. That song is good as fuck. And then there's Like This. Like like it sounds like a song... Like, I just came from church, and then you know how the radio changes from gospel to R&B and hip-hop. But they like to play like, the um, they like to start off with a song that, you know, it's a little mild. And then they get into all the ratchet stuff later on. That's like this. Like, like this give me Sunday vibes. Like, I don't know. Like, that's a nice song to listen to and just vibe to. Like, it just gives you that just... Just relaxing at home on a Sunday vibe. I don't know why. But that's another good song too on this album. So those are like um like the standout songs and my favorite on this album. Now I want to get into the air a little bit. So Full Moon was released in 2002 and it was supported by three singles. What About Us, Full Moon, my favorite, and He Is. The lead single, What About Us, was a very bold choice. Brandy sounded so edgy and had this flair. And the music video really emphasizes that because Brandy, like, she has this rock star, good girl, kind of went bad moment individual. And I love how the video had the whole Afrofuturism aesthetic going on. And I swear, when music videos had um, themes of Afrofuturism, it was just at it's best like music was really good during that time so i really love the visual for the song it really took the song to a whole nother level with it being so creative you know i already spoke on full moon the song i just i don't know what it is something about that song is really special like i i just feel like brandy just glides on this song like it is really good to listen to 
and just vibe. Like, I really love Full Moon. That song is so great. But now I'm going to talk about the third single. He is. Great song. But why was this a single? Like, He Is isn't a bad song. It's a good song to listen to. But I'm just like, why did they choose this song as a single? There were way better contenders. You have When You Touch Me. All in me. Nothing. Which, I don't know why when I hear nothing, it kind of reminds me of Be Without You. And I thought, like, these were songs that would have been a way better choice. And it was just ignored. And I don't, I don't, I don't know why. But I'm going to talk about Lennox's poor choice of singles later on. Because, ugh. I don't even know if this is the third single, honestly. I, I personally think it's hot for pop radio. I don't think you can turn... He is into a pop song like that. I mean, I think this song just has more element to it than that. Right, okay. Now I just think we can do a better job on it. We didn't get to see the full potential of this air because Brandy was pregnant with her um, child Sarai, which she had with Big Bird, who was a member of Dark Child's production team. And pretty much this air is centered around Brandy being pregnant and her being married to Big Bird, which would later be a lie, which blew up in Brandy's face in the aphrodisiac area. So we'll talk about that once we get there. But pretty much um, there wasn't a tour, like the album was promoted, but everything pretty much stopped when Brandy gave birth and they really couldn't do too much because you know, Brandy was pregnant. So it's kind of sad that we didn't get to see how well this era could have done. Cause oh my gosh, the music is so good. But I already know it would have been huge and it would have been a whole big deal. This album just checks every box. Everything about this album is just so great. I gotta give a huge shout out to Dark Child because the production on this album is so dope. It's so cool to hear the dubstep and electro influences. And this album just has so many gems. It's a worthy listen. And it's one of the best R&B albums that I've heard. And there is a reason why she's known as the vocal bible. Give this album a listen. Now, the only criticism that I have about this album is that it's too lengthy. The last three songs, Come a Little Closer, Wow, and Die Without You. Why are they on the album? To me, they were just very unnecessary and I feel like kind of messed up how that album should have ended the last song on the album should have been he is bam that's like it, it'd be perfect because like the way it started and how it ended it just it flowed right and then listening to these three songs just throw it off it just threw off what the album was working with and i like wow wow is actually one of my <laughs> favorite songs on this album too but it don't gotta be here Wow sounds like it should be on a movie soundtrack. That's how Wow sounds like to me. Like, it sounds like something that would play in a rom-com after they don't find out, oh my gosh, we're back together. We're going to make this work type shit. Like, I could see them playing Wow. Like, I'm surprised it wasn't on a movie soundtrack. But to me, like, these three songs, it just kind of felt like Never Say Never throwaway tracks and scraps that they say you know we're just gonna add to the album they're not bad songs they just feel very out of place otherwise the album would have been perfect but it's still a solid album and it's still my favorite next is aphrodisiac aphrodisiac is a very interesting album at first i didn't like this album but my appreciation grew for this album which is something i'll get into later but first, I want to talk about the songs that really stood out to me and my favorites. I have a lot of favorites on this album. I love Aphrodisiac, Who Is She To You, Focus, Necessary, Come As You Are, Finally. I have a lot of songs that I really love on this album. But the songs that, you know, like, I would say are my favorites are Who Is She To You, Aphrodisiac, and Necessary. The song Aphrodisiac accomplishes what What About Us did on Full Moon with it giving Brandy this new interesting sound. Aphrodisiac is up-tempo and experimental 
and it really stands out from the other songs which are more slow and mid-tempo on this album and i really enjoy how you know it's catchy and it's fun next is who is she to you which is probably my favorite song on this album I love how this song reminds me of Try Again, and funny enough, both songs are produced by Timbaland. And I'm so happy I found this mashup on YouTube. It is so dope hearing both Aaliyah, Try Again, and then Brandy, Who Is She You? Ugh, they go to well so perfectly. I used to like play and do my own little mashup in my head. I'm just like, yo, they sound so similar. So I'm glad there's a mashup. Necessary sounds refreshing every time I hear it. Like it doesn't get old. It's similar to the song Full Moon. Like I could hear it anytime and it just doesn't sound old. It just sounds very refreshing and new. So I really love listening to this song. I mentioned like my favorites, but I also have other songs that I listen to just as much. Like I love listening to Focus. It's so calming and relaxing. I also love Come As You Are. It's very catchy and I just love the whole sound on there. Lately, Finally has also been growing on me too. Like usually, you know, you know, I listen to the song is there, but like I've been really loving that song. And I just love the whole just message behind this song. Like I feel like it's a song where well, you feel more reassured and confident. You kind of, it's, it's kind of like you checking yourself when you're down or when you're not feeling so like, it, I don't know, it kind of just brings you up. Like I really love that song. It's a song that, you know, I've been listening to the most from Aphrodisiac at this moment. So I've been really loving Finally. It's a great song. Now let's get into the Aphrodisiac era. Aphrodisiac was released on June 25th, 2004. It sold 131,700 copies in its first week. The album was supported by three singles, Talk About Our Love featuring Kanye West, Who Is She To You, and Aphrodisiac. In this era, there were a lot of changes in Brandy's career. She has more creative control, she has new management, she's no longer linked with Dark Child, and she's facing controversy for a fake marriage with her past partner, Big Bird. I forgot to mention this, but the full moon era was centered around Brandy's pregnancy and marriage. However, the marriage was later exposed for being fake by Big Bird. He first exposed it and eventually Brandy admitted to it. They lied about being married to protect Brandy's image. And essentially, the whole breakup with her boyfriend and the fake marriage drama influenced the songs and idea of this album. Atlantic Records made a lot of weird moves with this album, especially with the singles. So the first single, the lead single of this album is Talk About Our Love featuring Kanye West, which did do well. It was a top 40 hit, but I just find it bizarre that they didn't choose aphrodisiac it was the standout song on this album it fit in with the the wave that was going on with crunk and snap music being very popular in 2004 and it was also different enough that it could have stood out and it wasn't even chosen as a lead single for one and two it didn't even get a u.s release i just find it very weird that they kind of sabotage that song because that song could have did very well. The second single, Who Is She To You, didn't have much success because it wasn't pushed. It wasn't promoted enough. There was plans for the song to have remixes. There was supposed to be one with Fabulous and there was supposed to be another version with Usher and not one of the remixes went through or they decided to release it, which I just find very weird. And I feel like the one with Usher would have been really cool and interesting because his remix was basically supposed to be his perspective. So Brandy singing Who Is She To You, he's singing Who Is He To You, which I find very interesting. And I feel like it could have worked well because we all know that 2004 was Usher year. Usher was dominating that year. So I just find it odd that they didn't decide to go with that remix. And there just wasn't any promotion for the song. There wasn't 
any um, talk show performances like they did with Talk About Our Love. I already spoke about Aphrodisiac, but even with it being the last single on the song, why did it get a US release? It was released internationally, but it just wasn't released in the United States. I just found that very weird. Like, why that decision? Like, I like I just don't understand it. Like, Atlantic just made very poor decisions here, and they just didn't promote the single nor the album. This era, this whole album was a flop due to poor promotion. It's like they didn't even try. It's like they basically disregarded Brandy and just said, fuck it because not much was done for this album. And the reason why I think Atlantic sabotaged this album, why wasn't this album or the songs really promoted on award shows like the BET Awards, VMAs, AMAs, Billboard Awards? I found it odd that Brandy didn't have any award show performances. She did do some performances for Talk About Our Love, and she did a performance for Aphrodisiac um, on this UK show. But why was there no award shows to promote this album? Like, This is something interesting that I found. Aphrodisiac was released on June 25th, 2004, literally four days before the B2 Awards that year. And at this point, the only single that was out was Talk About Our Love. Why didn't they have Brandy scheduled to perform at the BT Awards? Because her album would have just came out and that would have been great promotion for Talk About Our Love. Or maybe she could have did like a little medley where she go from Talk About Our Love to maybe Who Is She To You or Aphrodisiac or any other song on this album. Or why didn't they just do a performance of Talk About Our Love and then drop the album that same night that like when i saw that that's when i just knew i'm just like they just didn't give a fuck i'm just like there were things that they could have done to promote this album but they just chose not to and i just find that really odd the 2020 bt awards i was like brandy's dominated at the bt awards for the first time i said how the fuck is brandy nominated for the first time and they see bullshit like this and it's like no fucking wonder it, it like the choices made just baffles me it really baffles me. Like, I don't understand that. And then with the example I've given, the music video could have dropped for the next single. It could have picked up traction on 106 in part. Radio starts picking it up. That, that would have been great promotion for the, um, the lead single on the album. But that just, these choices were not made. Like, it's just so weird. It really is weird. Like, how they just decided not to promote this album. This whole era and album flopped because of poor promotion. And it's it's really disappointing because this album could have done much better, but because Atlantic just decided not to promote this album, it just, it didn't go anywhere. In an interview with Vibe, Brandy mentioned that during the aphrodisiac era, most of the people who were there when she first signed to the label left and that Atlantic was shifting their focus to hip hop artists. Supports my point as to, you know, them sabotaging her. It's very disappointing that this album didn't get its just due and that it had an unsuccessful air, but the music was amazing. Aphrodisiac was technically ahead of its time because it influenced alternative R&B, which became predominant in the 2010s of artists like Tanache, Miguel, Seven Streeter, Aphrodisiac is such a complex album. Brandy speaks about her troubling relationship on the album's intro, Who I Am, her ex cheating on Who Is She To You, and airs out her frustration and anger of her relationship failing on I Try. But then she wants confirmation on relationship status on Where You Wanna Be, and then Focus follows up on that song, but it's more introspective as to whether she should focus on herself or the relationship. So she's having like a hard time deciding what she wants. Even though she's having these mixed thoughts and feelings, she expresses hope on Necessary and Say You Will. The song How I Feel kind of carries from the same topic from where you want to be in Focus, where there's this like second thought or chance of the relationship working out. Come As You Are 
It's a self-reflection song where Brandy addresses her growth from a girl to woman. She basically proclaims what type of partner she wants and how she's grown. Not only does Brandy touches on love and heartbreak on this album, but she also discusses her thoughts on the music industry. She celebrates 90s music and culture on Turn It Up, referencing Aaliyah, Missy Elliott, Timbaland, and Kid and Play. But in contrast, she describes being lost and out of place in the music industry on Should I Go, especially with her not dominating the industry alongside Aaliyah and Monica like in the late 90s since Aaliyah passed away. It's sad that Brandy thought about ending her music career and finally, which is like the fight song on this album, Brandy braces and reassures herself after all these thoughts and feelings. She basically knows what's best for her, which is why I feel like this song should have been the last song because not only does it work with her talking about her relationship, but it also relates to her talking about the music industry so i feel like this song in my opinion just ties two topic into one where brandy just figures out you know i know what i want i love the message of the song because it's about learning and moving on from those past tribulations and becoming a better version of yourself after that or just basically knowing what's best for yourself like after all that bs and after all the shit i went through i'm here standing and i'm still pushing and fighting. That's what I really love about this song. I love the complexity of this album. There's so many range of feelings and emotions, and there's so much depth to this album compared to her other works, and I really appreciate that. And I wanted to go back on the point I made with the samples that she used, especially on Finally and Should I Go, because I really feel the emotions from those songs. I also love how this album was a tribute to Aaliyah. The main producer of Aphrodisiac is Timbaland, who worked very closely with Aaliyah. Brandy expressed her condolences to her on Turn It Up and Should I Go. So it's really cool to see how much Aaliyah has influenced Brandy. Because if you didn't know, Brandy's debut single was inspired by Back and Forth. With so much on this album, like with so much disgust, that's why it's really disappointing how Atlantic didn't even try to promote or push this album and just basically disregarded it because there was just so much potential and it literally all went down the drain by Atlantic. Overall, I love these two albums. Both albums represent a high point and a low point in Brandy's career. And Full Moon, I just feel like Brandy was on top of the world. Like, I just love how she vocally sounds there. And I'm really, I'm really glad that she was able to record, you know, very well. Because I feel like when people follow up a huge era like that, they tend to release an average or lackluster project and Brandy didn't do that. So I'm really glad she took that break. I think she took like a four year break from the last project. So from Never Say Never to Full Moon, there was a four year break. So she had time to relax and think of new material and stuff like that. So I'm really glad she did that because she created her best album. And then on Aphrodisiac, Brandy is just so defeated. That's the vibe I get from this album. Like, you know, very defeated, very sad. But even then, she still creates, you know, this great work, even with all those, like, feelings. These two albums are severely underrated and just don't get much recognition. Like, they show and represent the artistry and creativity of Brandy very well. I'm just surprised a lot more people don't talk about them. Anyways, that's my thoughts on Full Moon and Aphrodisiac. My two most favorite albums from Brandy, her most interesting albums to me. Let me know your thoughts on these albums and what's your favorite album from Brandy? Is it Full Moon or Aphrodisiac or any other for works? And if you haven't listened to these albums yet, please do. They are great. They are too great to be slept on. Subscribe if you're feeling me. Like if you're getting me. And share because you care. Thanks for watching. Bye.